warm welcome to Jeremy. Thank you everyone for having me. I'm very, very excited to be here. I just want to get a pulse from the crowd. Can somebody raise their hand and tell me what is what is an engineer? Uh, there are engineers that work on trains, yes. Basically, it's like someone who works with technology stuff. Uh huh. <laughs> engineers absolutely work with technology, that's correct, yes. Computers. Yes, cars and computers, and you'll actually see engineering examples of cars and computers uh, in just a minute when I show you guys the video. That is, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and electronics, and I have electronics to show you guys today as well. Yes, yeah, engineering no. is actually a really, really big field in yeah, electricity that we have here in this building, all the way to uh, civil engineering, building the schools and designing, making sure they're safe, roads, and also uh, the internet. You know, uh, the internet that we use uh, are built by network engineers. I build these things called routers that route information and electricity through, so you can send emails and watch videos and things like that. I am a computer engineer. Uh, and I work on computer electronics, uh, programming, and that kind of stuff. So, I uh, there's also, uh, you also see an example of uh, biomedical engineering, engineers that uh, create inventions to help people uh, be healthier, and of course, mechanical engineers who uh, make awesome uh, cars and, and uh, spaceships. I want to kind of give you guys a sense of all the cutting edge technology that's out there. Here's a, a, a walking robot. <laughs> This doesn't look like much. We walk up and down steps all the time. But for a robot, uh, imagine everything that a robot has to think about. A robot needs to know how to move their legs up and down, and also be able to keep balance. Have you guys heard of a Star Wars or Iron Man? Yeah? Okay, so a lot of what I'm going to show you is, is going to be inventions that are, that are in, and things that are being built today by engineers that you see in those movies that look like they're really far away, but they're actually here today. This is a self-driving car. Which is incredible. This came out last week. When you grow up, you're not going to have to drive. The, the mechanical engineering, the electrical engineering, the computer engineering, the computer science, and all of the, you mentioned a lot of sensors, uh, sensing what cars are in front, to so my left and right and behind me, so the car itself knows, oh, there's a car in front of me, I should keep my distance. Or, oh, I, I, I need to get over there, so I need to switch lanes, and I can see where the lanes are. Uh, all of that, a lot of computer vision, which, which I'll show you guys a little bit more in a second. Uh, computer vision is the way computers can see things in the world with cameras and, and, and sensors and things like that. This is an example of uh, robotics being applied to a person who lost an arm, and this is a prosthetic arm. The way it works is there are sensors uh, that uh, well, the, the arm attaches to, to himself here, and he moves his muscles uh, to control uh, the fingers on the arm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a self-driving car, can you also drive it? So at the end of the video, he actually uh, uh, slams on the brakes and he takes back control because he got nervous. So if, if you ever want to, you can, you can go back and, and control it, just like that. When I was at Microsoft, uh, I worked on Xbox. Anybody heard of Xbox? Cool, awesome. So <laughs> after we got Xbox One uh, out the door, uh, I worked on this thing called HoloLens. Have you guys seen uh, Iron Man, where Iron Man uh, works with Jarvis and he's touching holograms at his computer? And, and you know Star Wars is hologram people popping up all the time? So let's take a look at this. Go beyond the screen, where your digital world is blended with your real world. And explore the places we've never been. NASA's walk on Mars. That's my favorite part. All of the, uh, the amazing adventures that you see in movies, they're here now. The future is here, and it's just beginning. And when you guys grow up, and, and you know, when some of you guys become engineers, and hopefully I'll have inspired some of you guys to be, uh, to be interested in engineering, you will be bringing this new era of robots and self-driving cars and holograms to, to life. Any questions? Do you think this one is working on how you could plan everything before you do it? That's actually somebody's building that right now. Uh, there's a company called Turbo, and they're using the HoloLens to map out exactly how they want to build uh, a building. And then different people can look and say, you know, oh, we, we want to move that there. And they can look through walls and say, oh, this pole needs to be over here. Uh -huh. So, um, the HoloLens, if you, like, when you actually play, like, Minecraft while you're learning? Yes. You look up <laughs> a HoloLens Minecraft uh, on YouTube, and you could look around uh, your little house and follow your character around. 
Um, and you can like look into like look into houses or like look underground to find to find a lava and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Ah, so uh, excellent. So so you know about the Oculus Rift. The Oculus Rift is something that's very similar. Uh, an Oculus Rift is a virtual reality device, meaning you can't see through it. You can't see the real world, and you just see the screen. And the whole end is an all-in-one computer, so if, if you don't have uh, Oculus, you have to be plugged in with a cable yeah. to, a, to a computer. For this demo, I'm going to need six volunteers. that we wrote uh, back when we were college, we just did it for fun. Have you guys heard of the Kinect? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, who do you guys think guess at how the Kinect may work? Um, it senses where like your body and movement is through the camera in the sensor. Exactly. But it also maps out the room that you are in. Yes. The red is uh, infrared. Is uh, infrared rays. You guys know how bats uh, uh, see in the dark? Echolocation. Echolocation, exactly. Uh, they send out waves and then, and then they, they wait for them to bounce back. Xbox One Connect uh, sends out the wave and it just uses one camera and it, it measures how much time it takes for it to come back. So you can imagine a wave uh, that, that goes like really far and then comes back, it'll take a lot of time for it to come back. So if it takes a lot of time for that ray to come back, it means that thing is, is really far. If uh, I'm like right in front of it, it'll bounce and then come right back, it'll be really short. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna show you guys one more video. Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. This is Robo Bear. Robo Bear is a little invention that I made when I was in college. The original idea for Robo Bear came from I, I wanted to give this Robo Bear actually to my girlfriend who was in Japan at the time, and I was in Georgia. And I wanted to be able to give her a hug halfway across the world. So that's kind of how it started. And uh, I, <laughs> I, but then I, I took it around the schools and uh, I found that students really liked Robo Bear. I thought to myself, building Robo Bear isn't that hard. You know, I wonder if uh, in elementary school you could do it. And so uh, I started teaching these classes and yeah, even a six-year-old could do this. So, uh, let me kind of walk you guys through how this works. Does anybody know what this thing in the middle is? This blue thing? Yeah. Yep, a circuit board, motherboard, exactly. This uh, particular one is called a, uh, an Arduino Uno, and it's a microcontroller. So, a microcontroller is uh, the brain of a robot. All of our programming uh, goes into here. Does anybody know what these two blue things are? Yeah, exactly, these are servos, awesome. Um, so servos are what allows Robert's arms to move. So servos move when you put electricity through them. Any questions on, on Robert? Yeah. Can you make it where it has arms and legs? Yes, so the, a great question. The answer is yes, but it takes a lot of power. I've tried doing it. Uh, it doesn't work very well with the setup that I have, but it's possible. Oh, uh, it doesn't actually like walk on its own, like the robot you saw in the first video. I want to be able to create a robot bear uh, that can actually walk on its own, like walk across the floor without me touching it. Um, and the way I'm thinking about doing that, you guys know about Iron Man, I mean, an Iron Man suit, right? So the way I want to make a robot bear walk is to make a robot bear suit. So the suit uh, can be big and clunky and, and walk, and then we can just put the teddy bear inside the suit. If you guys are interested, uh, I'd actually love to offer a RoboBear workshop to teach you guys how to build uh, RoboBear from scratch. So you'll get all the different separate parts, uh, and then you'll have to put the parts together and you'll learn how to program it. If you guys are interested, feel free to uh, talk to your parents and your parents will know how to uh, reach out. So, um, this is something that I built uh, when I first learned uh, programming. So the Adventures of Nutsy the Super Squirrel. So this is not the Nutsy the Squirrel. That green thing coming up there, that's actually a snake. Uh, I want to avoid that because that could hurt me. So I'm going to get this red acorn and I can breathe fire now. 
So, <laughs> I'll get that blink, but now I can fly. So, I'm flying up to the sky. And uh, you just want to uh, see what that uh, silver acorn is. Okay. Teleportation! Alright, get this green acorn and heal. I'm going to need that health uh, for my boss battle in a minute. So, I'm going to go ahead and go. Oh, there's a giant snake, and he doesn't uh, get damaged when I hit him. So, oh, and I don't know how to do this. Oh, no, you're not! Hurry, you gotta save the girl squirrel and burn the uh, cage down. Oh, catch her, don't let her fall. So that is all math. Uh, all those researchers, those are mathematicians, uh, writing formulas and algorithms. Math is a huge, huge, uh, very important thing for engineering. Uh, and also science, uh, especially if you're going into uh, electrical engineering or mechanical engineering or uh, things that deal with physical objects. Uh, physics, because physics teaches you how, uh, how things move, uh, and also uh, electricity uh, and magnetism is a big part of physics, too, which is huge in electrical. So he is going to be uh, having a workshop. How many are interested in learning how to do that type of stuff?